Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Wild Podcast. I miss you guys so, so much. Um, just like I stated before that this season, I'm going to have some special, special guests because uh, I feel like with season two, I don't want to be the only one to have these type of conversations that we're going to have. There's a various different topics that I, I really want to dive into, but this particular topic that I'm going to have a discussion with, with a fellow, fellow good friend, I feel like it's really important, you know, we have these conversations, especially if you are Haitian and especially if you're dealing with mental health. And of course, what better is to have a professional, a licensed therapist to engage in this conversation. So this, so this is a dear friend of mine, a dear family friend as well, but I'm not going to say too much. I'm going to allow her to introduce herself and tell a little bit a little bit about herself. The floor is yours. Let the good people know who you are. All right. Thank you so much, Jeff, for having me on here. My name is Merlindia Bellevue. I'm a licensed mental health counselor um, here in South Florida, and I am the owner of my own private practice, Be Well and Blossom Counseling. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to be here and talk a little bit about uh, mental health. This is great, great, great. And you know, we, we go back go back a little bit you know she is one of my my cousin's best friend can i say that, that you guys are bffs they, yes. they go back <laughs> way 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 back back in haiti I and, you know, I got, <laughs> yes i got a chance to meet her and she's one of the sweetest people that i know um just a great great person and you know i felt like what better person to have to have this discussion yep. and we know that mental health is such a big, big topic, especially right now within the last couple of years, I do mm -hmm. feel like the pandemic kind of really opened up that discussion even more because we were dealing, dealing with a lot back in 2020. And it just continues to just we continue to dive into it. But we know in the Haitian community, mm -hmm. I'm Haitian or Haitian American, technically, um, <laughs> this is something that does not get talked about a lot, right? right. And it kind of gets ignored a little bit. And, you know, for various different reasons, you know, my personal belief is you know religion kind of plays a big big role in it okay. and but i feel like that you know this is something that we need to talk about because it's real it is really mm -hmm. really real you can believe in god and believe in therapy i say this mm -hmm. all the time my wife says this all the time and i feel like this is a very important conversation to have so i wanted to ask you you know what made you decide to get into your profession because we know growing up haitian yeah. It's <laughs> like all leglies, like I, <laughs> right? The, the three yep. L's. Mm -hmm. And when you choose a profession, they usually want you to be what a, a doctor, a doctor <laughs> lawyer. a nurse, a lawyer, yep. engineer, you know, the all the stereotypical, but you can't you went a different route. What made you decide to become a uh, professional therapist? Well, that's a very interesting question because um that wasn't my original path, right? Like you said, you know, um, there's this expectation for you to be the doctor, a lawyer, right, along those lines. So um, from a very young age, I always wanted to be a pediatrician, right? I always um, wanted to work with children. I love children till this day. Um, so that was my path um, since a very young age. Um, however, um, over time, it kind of shifted to me wanting to be a medical practitioner to, um, you know, being in the mental health field. So that shifted. And as you said, you can only imagine the conversations <laughs> that I had to have with my parents, letting them know about that shift that I was thinking about making, right? And of course, there's still, um, there was a lot of education that had to take place as far as what a mental health counselor was, mental health, what I would be doing, and, you know, all of the things. So, um, of course, my parents are very supportive. So, um, once they learned about it, you know, they were on board cheering me on. So, um, that kind of shifted from that, right? Pediatricians to now mental health. Um, and, of course, as I said, I wanted to um, care for children. And that's where I originally started. Um, as far as the population, caring for younger children, um, specifically um, kids who experience trauma, unfortunately. Um, I also worked with um, teenagers uh, in, uh, in a substance abuse um, residents. So my um, experiences in mental health really kind of started with kids, teenagers, and of course now to 
adults, um, specifically um, women. Um, so that's kind of how I started, and um, you know, I'm here now. <laughs> that's awesome. That that's that's an amazing amazing story, and how you decided, like, you know, you wanted to be a pediatrician because I I didn't know this, and but you dived into becoming a licensed therapist, but mm -hmm. still deal with kids. So there's still a form of care that of is still being given to, to children, mm -hmm. just not maybe from a medical standpoint. Well, I guess you, it's still medical, actually, technically. It's still, it's still yeah. medical. It's just not patient care, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a different branch um, of it. Where, where did your passion for kids and wanted to care for kids, where did that come from? Uh, you know what? That's a good question. I don't know. Um, it's just from very young, right? Very young. I would just enjoy being around other children. Of course, I was a child myself and um, I always wanted to do more. Um, so I don't know if it kind of goes back to my own mom, you know, being um, so nurturing and caring for other children, right? Even my grandmother, um, you know, uh, my mom's side is from Masha, Masha de Salim. So um, whenever I would go over there, um, my grandmother was very big on caring for the community, specifically the mm -hmm. children within the community. So that's what was modeled for me. And that's what I kind of saw growing up. And I always said to myself, I want to care um, for children, right? Whatever that may look like, I want to care for children. And of course, initially it, you know, I wanted it to be as um, a ped pediatrician, but that never kind of, you know, went away as far as me caring for children and trying to do my part um, and, you know, be be of a support as much as I'm able to. Oh, that's good. That's 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 good. That's mm -hmm. good. That that makes sense then. That actually makes sense where the love for children yep. came from seeing your mom, how she cared for people and just being mm -hmm. involved, you know, in, in, in Haiti and around her community. That that yeah. makes that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, so since you are a, a, a licensed therapist mm -hmm. and you're Haitian, yes. and you dive it into this career, into this um, to, into this profession uh, in South Florida, because I'm I'm assuming in South Florida, just you know, you're 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 kind of connected in some shape or form with other therapists. Um, yes. Have you seen? I know South Florida. For those who don't know where South Florida is at, that's in South Florida. That's Palm Beach County. Um, mm -hmm. Broward County, Miami, um, yeah. as well, Day County, shout out to Day County. I, used, I lived out there for about 13 years. So there's a huge Haitian population out there. Definitely. I think South Florida probably has either the first or the second largest Haitian community in the United States. It's, it's either between them or New York. Um, but have you seen, since diving into the first, are there, have you noticed or seen, is there a, any other or a lot of Haitian um, therapists that exist? Or do you feel like it's a small percentage of you guys that are actually in this profession? That's another interesting question, right? Because when I first started out, um, you know, I didn't see many therapists like me um, and specifically um, Haitian therapists, right? You know, um, therapists of Haitian background. Um, I didn't necessarily see that until at least where I was working, right? Some of the places that I was working until I got into um, a different type of agency and I was actually providing services in Creole and they had other uh, therapists who are also Haitian. And I'm like, oh, wow, there are, you know, others, um, you know, out there. So I was glad that, um, you know, I was able to make those connections and just uh, just kind of like a sense of community within the mental health field, uh, at least as a counselor. Um, so I do feel like there are many of us in Florida, right? It's just a matter of connecting and being able to, you know, like kind of link up if that makes sense. So we're out there, it's just a matter of just kind of connecting, um, which I'm glad that there are so many of us out there because it's needed. Most definitely, it, it, it definitely is. Do you feel like, um, have there been any kind of like resistance or when you, when you have like your clients, specifically Haitian, mm -hmm. right? So I'm sure you, you have, clients or, or patients rather from all different types of backgrounds, mm -hmm. I'm going to assume. Yeah. Um, but you know, in in our community, in the Haitian community, mental health is not something that gets talked about a lot. Or I remember one day I was at a former church that I used to go to and it was a particular service and we had one of the pastors was speaking and she was speaking against 
mental health or therapy. And, and it was like, you know, we don't need to go through and see a licensed therapist mm -hmm. at all. Um, if you believe in God, if you're a Christian, you're a believer, you know, whatever, you should not be dealing with mental health. That is of mm -hmm. Satan, that is of the devil, all this stuff. Um, if you are trusting in that, that means you don't you lack faith, which right. I strongly disagree. I, I get the concept of it, but I strongly dis disagree, especially as a believer, um, because it's just like, to me, it's almost saying that if somebody who is sick, right, mm -hmm. physically sick, you don't need to go to the doctor. Yeah. Um, if going to the doctor, saying you don't trust in God to heal you. And, mm -hmm. you know, I do believe that God is a miracle worker and he can heal those who are ill, those who are sick. I've, I've seen it, but it doesn't mean that patient care does not exist and it should not be exercised. Like we still need to apply wisdom. So right. I believe the same thing when it comes to uh, mental health and seeking a professional regarding that. Um, mm -hmm. Have you seen with your patients who are Haitian or Haitian descent, has there mm -hmm. been any pushback or, or what is the common theme that you have kind of noticed where being Haitian mental health is something that's just not being talked about? Yeah, definitely. And everything that you said, you know, is like 100 percent and um, it ties to what it is um, that I've, you know, noticed. Right. Um, with some of the clients that I've worked with. So, um, you know, I'll talk a little bit about just like maybe the, the, the older clients that I've worked with. And of course, the mm -hmm. you know, if you if you want to say Haitian American, um, right, you know, that are here and that That's may be <laughs> and more willing um, to participate and engage um, in therapy. So um, I, I used to work for an agency where, uh, you know, I catered to, um, you know, pregnant moms, right? Expecting mothers, mm -hmm. of course, um, I was a Creole speaking therapist. So I had, you know, a, a lot of Haitian mommies on my caseload. So going to their homes, speaking to them and really just kind of letting them know what it is that I do and what kind of a service um, that I was providing because through this program, they had access to a nutritionist, a nurse, and of course, mental health, which is myself, right? Um, so I, you know, in some instances, I would find that they were um, open to the nutritionist and the nurse, right? More so open to the nurse. But then when it came to me as the you know therapist, there was some reluctance there. Right. So I kind of approached, um, you know, those clients um, as far as just kind of letting them know that I'm just here to be a listening ear um, to talk about their journey. Right. When it comes to motherhood, their pregnancy and just to kind of provide support. So I really put them at ease and didn't really make them seem like, OK, I was there to just kind of pick at their brain or just I was trying to just kind of uh, put out any like of those taboo beliefs, right? Any assumptions um, that perhaps they may have had when it came to therapy or, you know, mental health or even a therapist, right? So um, building that rapport was very important to me because I know how it is because I'm from the culture and I wanted to, again, you know, gain their trust and also provide that support they, they of course needed. So definitely reluctance and some resistance, even I could say, from some of the clients that I've had um, and, you know, just kind of letting them know, as you said, that you can still have, you know, your religious beliefs and, you know, accept and seek support, um, you know, as far as therapy, right? Two things can certainly coexist. It doesn't take away, you know, from the other. Um, so really going into that aspect of education and just kind of allowing them to feel comfortable with me, um, I've noticed that it did put them at ease and they were more willing and receptive to me coming to their home because, you know, this was community work. So I was going into their home. So you can imagine mm -hmm. that wall was just like, right there. Right. But yeah. then even agreeing to allow me into their home. Um, I viewed that as, you know, uh, them willing to at least listen to what I had to say. So um, uh, that's kind of been my experience. And of course, the younger generation, they are more willing and open, but then they would share with me that, okay, well, you know, my mom doesn't know that I'm doing this or my dad doesn't know that I'm doing mm -hmm. this. Right. Or, you know, I, you know, people don't really believe it. So this is my outlet, but I'm not really sure. So again, trying to provide that education and allowing them to be comfortable and 
kind of like, um, you know, challenge a little bit of some of those assumptions uh, that there are out there when it comes to therapy. Um, so I've kind of experienced, you know, different different clients and, um, you know, at different places. So, yeah. Um, but ultimately, that reluctance is certainly there um, when it comes to some clients, not all, some clients. Okay. So mm -hmm. do you believe it's more common as far as like the pushback or maybe the, the hesitation? Do you feel like it comes more for those who are born and raised in Haiti versus the ones who are actually, well, let's say they're Americanized, grew up in, you know, in the United mm -hmm. States, um, and they're, they're not adapting to maybe some of that old school culture or, 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 or ways? Yeah. Well, that's been my experience, but I know there are um, psychologists and also therapists in Haiti, right? Again, me, I, I grew up in Haiti. I grew up there for 12 years and it, I didn't know such thing existed until I came here to the States, you know, meaning psychologists, therapists, right? I didn't know that, um, you know, those that even existed until I came mm -hmm. here. So to learn that, you know, we do have those providers in Haiti, however, is it utilized, right? How is it utilized? Um, that, that was kind of news to me. So of course, you know, my dad sharing some of this and just like his interactions. And um, so kind of like, it was a teaching moment for me because I didn't know this. Um, so it's, I can only say that my experience um, has been with, you know, some of the older generation in terms of them coming from Haiti and not necessarily, um, you know, growing up here, right? But is it all of them? No, I can't generalize that. It's just only been some of the clients that I've worked with that perhaps came, you know, specifically from Haiti and didn't have that, um, you know, if you will, American upbringing, if you will. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. And and it, it's, it's crazy to think that because mental health is not talked about so much in, in, in the Haitian community, in our culture, um, that it's not surprising, but it is surprising in some ways that, hey, they're actually licensed therapists in Haiti, which it makes sense because like, why wouldn't they be? But it's not something that gets pushed out there. Like you said, are those resources being utilized? Because we right. see what goes on in Haiti. And mm -hmm. of course, you know, there are amazing, beautiful parts of Haiti that, that very much exists that doesn't get talked about in the news, that does not get shown at all, you know, and thank God for social media, because social media, it helps paint more of a clear picture as Haiti as right. a whole. But we also right. know that Haiti does have a lot of issues that's been going on for decades, 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 and, you know, not to kind of get into the whole political thing and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> um, that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> yes, yeah, a whole other discussion. But I say that to say is that there are a lot of resources that there are resources that are there available, and it makes mm -hmm. me think about here living in the United States, and and though we're you know sp specifically speaking about Haitians and the Haitian community when it comes to mental health, we know that it is a common thing even with um, African Americans or or Jamaicans or Trinidadians or whatever. You know, a lot of my friends who are from different um, cultures and different backgrounds, mm -hmm. it's like a common thing. It's like yeah, we did not grow up talking about you know anxiety depression, right. you know, anything that would be looked as mental health. And you mm -hmm. don't have to have anxiety or depression to see a therapist. Sometimes it's just getting a checkup, making sure that you're good, yeah. make sure, you, you know, everything is aligned because there is a lot that we deal with in our day to day. You may not realize like, hey, you know what? I can use a little, you know, somebody to kind of help continue to navigate my life, the direction it needs to go. It does not take away from my belief with God. It does not take away what God is doing for me and my trust in him. Yeah. But I, I always equate it to the same thing as, because I'm in healthcare as well, but I'm just more in the informatic side of it. Okay. But it's just the same thing if you have somebody who is sick, right? You have a pain in your knee that's just not going away, or you're having a headache that you just cannot shake off. Yeah, you could take some time or things like that. Or if you're having chest pains, um, yes, you could, you pray for God for healing and all these miraculous things, but there's nothing wrong about going to the doctor or let me just get my daily checkup. Like I just turned 43 the other day, so I'm getting older, Yeah, yeah. but I'm getting older, but it means like I have to go to the doctor more, not because I feel sick, yeah. but it's because I am getting older. I need to get my blood work done, make sure that I'm good, you know, make sure that everything is the way it needs to be physically. Right. So I believe this is kind of like the same thing when it comes to um, 
when it comes to your, seeing a therapist, and I, I'm I'm super proud of you. I, I congratulate you for um, taking on this step. Um, I do believe this is your calling, um, and it, and you stated this from having a passion when it comes to kids and having a passion where you want to become a pediatrician, which means you wanted to care for people. Yeah. And you found the avenue where it made the most sense for you. And you started your own business from it. You know, yeah. it's extremely successful. That is amazing. That is truly, truly, truly amazing. Um, just real quick, just to touch on something that you said. Yeah, sure. Is very important, right? Um, that I, I tend to emphasize this often on, uh, on my platforms. Um, uh, that you do not need to be in a crisis to seek therapy, right? You kind of highlighted that earlier. Um, you can just kind of simply go and just kind of talk to somebody, right? Um, sometimes I feel um, my experience has been that uh, people think that you need to be in a major crisis or you need to be um, suffering with anxiety or depression or ha have all of these intense emotions for you to seek out support, right? You basically need to just kind of reach to that level. And then that's when you're seeking out therapy. No, um, mental health is really just that, right? How do you maintain your mental health? What are some things that you do to promote your mental health? I have clients, um, some clients on my caseload that uh, they're, they're, they're seeing me to, you know, continue to reinforce their mental health. So meaning that, okay, well, they're looking for tools, right, to know how to navigate through stressors when it comes up. So they're not necessarily in a crisis, but they're just kind of, as you said, going to the doctor, doing these little checkups, right? We may not be meeting as often, maybe it's you know, bi-weekly or once a month, kind of like a check-in, but they're still doing this for themselves because they want to address their mental health or continue to reinforce it. So that's something that I kind of stress to really everybody that you don't need to be in a crisis to seek support. Sometimes you need um, a third party, right? Maybe there's mm -hmm. some things that you want to address and perhaps you um, you know, don't want to bring it to your spouse or your friends or your siblings or loved ones, right? You kind of want that third party and just say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm just looking for an additional outlet, right? And that's okay. So um, definitely that's something that I continue to reinforce, um, you know, to uh, everybody that this is a resource that can be helpful and it doesn't need to just be utilized when things are not necessarily going well, if that makes sense. Well, that makes that makes perfect sense. That, mm -hmm. that that makes perfect sense. What what ways? Because it kind of leads into my next question. What ways mm -hmm. that you believe, um, from your experience, that can really help bridge the gap between, you know, the Haitian community and mental health and seeking the help that they need? Because again, you mm -hmm. know, we know that there are sometimes pushbacks. You alluded to it from your experience. Right. Um, what 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 do you feel that we can that can be used to help promote not only mental health and the awareness of it, because sometimes we just ignore it and act like mm -hmm. it doesn't exist or this is the way it is. You know, God, you know, calls us just to suffer. And so we just got to suffer in what we're dealing with, which is the biggest BS in my personal opinion. And it's not true at all. Um, we, he didn't create us just to suffer in this world. He created us mm -hmm. to also in, to, to enjoy, um, yeah. have faith over fear. But what ways that you feel like, what resources that you feel like that can be used to make um, seeking therapy okay in the Haitian community? Yeah. And it's just that, right? Maybe um, us talking about it more, right? Being more vocal about it and breaking things down, right? Um, so not just saying mental health, but what is it, right? What are the benefits of it? What does it look like? Because again, going back to what my experience has been with some of the clients is they have those assumptions, right? Those beliefs that, okay, well, you know, this person is here to do this to me, right? Are they going to do something to my brain? Oh, these different beliefs, right? Um, so breaking it down and making it you know, showing what the process of therapy is. And I think that's something that I try to do, um, again, on, on some of my platforms is showing the process of therapy, right? So even that initial contact, you looking for a provider um, and talking to that provider, asking questions, um, asking for a consult call, meaning like a free 10 to 15 minutes to kind of get to know the provider, right? I 
no, right? Because you kind of get a vibe for that provider, right? So I kind of walk you through that process. So I think that could be um, a major factor in terms of bridging, right? So gaining more understanding of what that process looks like, what it entails, um, you know, what can you expect when it comes to actually being in session? How do you measure your progress? All of these things could be helpful and educational for that person to know and perhaps could help them with some of those beliefs that they have about therapy in the first place and just noticing, okay, well, oh, there could be benefits for me just by, you know, speaking to someone, by speaking to a professional. So I think education definitely is key. And, you know, as we're talking about it here, being vocal about it and breaking things down. So I think that could really be helpful. Yeah, breaking down that wall, that that wall mm -hmm. that that exists where it's like, I, I, I can't do I can't do this. You know, it doesn't make sense. You know, I don't mm -hmm. need to see a doctor to see what's going on in my brain or in my head and things of that sort. You know, just some of the myths that I believe that they believe in. Um, that prevents them from seeking the help mm -hmm. that will help them to become better parents or better spouses or, or better, um, you know, whatever it is that, yeah. that, that, that is needed because, it, you know, when you're struggling mentally, it impacts everyone around you. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it affects people around you and getting that help and speaking of it and vocalizing, it, especially with our people, I feel like that's something that will kind of help us out a lot. Cause we know like Haitians could be very stubborn. They believe yeah. what they believe. <laughs> you can't shake that right. at all. I see what my, I see what my dad, you know, God bless his, God bless his heart. <laughs> He's gotten better over the years, way better actually over the years, but man, that guy was, uh, that's my dad. I love my dad, man. You know, I love my dad to death. He's amazing. But you know, mm -hmm. just even other family members that I that that I have and friends who I know who are Haitian, see how they parent, how resistant and stubborn when it comes to when it comes to this. And yeah. so it, it it's 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 good that we can be able to talk about it, put it on the forefront, and 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 you're able to kind of help break that wall down that's kind yeah. of preventing them from wanting to seek the help that they need. Yeah. And as you talk about that, you know, those beliefs, right, you know, the, uh, you know, that resistance, um, I don't go in just saying, okay, well, this is what you need to do, or, you know, you should believe in this, right? So I actually welcome, you know, the myths, I welcome the resistance, I welcome, you know, um, some, some of that reluctance, because I actually want to know why. Um, that there's this like automatic wall, right? You know, when it comes to therapy or just kind of receiving or accepting that support. I want to know where does that come from, right? So the more that you um, inquire and just kind of figure, hey, you know, where did you learn this? You know, what is that belief that, okay, well, you can't seek out therapy? Where Where is this coming from? You're allowing that person to talk and process and, you know, ultimately you're get, you're building that rapport and even the person starts saying, oh, well, where does that come from, right? So it's getting even more awareness as far as what it is that they believe in, why they believe in it, and would they be open to maybe like uh, an additional approach, right? Because as you said, we all need outlets. Um, so if therapy can be that outlet for someone, then why not, right? You have someone to talk to um, and not and just be a listening ear and, of course, provide you with tools that can be helpful for you with some of the maybe concerns that you're bringing in. Um, so that's that's a bit of my approach. So I kind of welcome the reluctance, welcome the resistance, and we we talk through it yeah, um, and just kind of figure out you know what the best course of action is going to be for you. So it seems like just making making them feel very comfortable and at ease when they yeah. when they're seeing you, and and that builds trust. And Definitely. It, I, and I believe once you build that trust with someone, it makes it easier for them to open up. It makes it easier for them to express themselves and your and and be more open to receive the knowledge and and and, and the information that they need to help them out in whatever particular area in their life that they're seeking um therapy for. Yeah, definitely. And it all begins with a conversation. So like I said, going back to the mummies that I would go to their homes, it, it's as if we're having a conversation, right? So allowing them to feel comfortable and we're kind of, we're talking about their day and that alone, right? Um, is, you know, therapeutic, 
right? Because they have someone listening to them. We're talking about their day. How is it affecting you? Talk, and you know, uh, they won't even realize that at some point they're starting to talk about their emotions and how it's impacting mm-hmm. them. From just that initial conversation, it kind of leads to other conversation. And then I just kind of ask them, hey, you know, how are you feeling? And they kind of like, oh, wow, yeah, uh, it, it, it can be helpful for me to have somebody. And then that allows you to come in for a second session or a third session until, you know, mm-hmm. their needs are met. And then that's that. That's good. That's good. Um, what what can you provide or can you provide any recommendations for any self-care practices for anybody who is struggling with? Um, with self-care or mental health? Yeah. Um, So definitely self-care is that like term that's kind of been thrown around, right? Often Mm -hmm. uh, for the past few years, right? Self-care, self-care, self-care. So something that I encourage um, my clients, I I work specifically with women. um, So I'm not working with children. I work specifically with women who are um, you know, experiencing any stressors, life changes, transitions, mommies, right, postpartum. So um, I always kind of leave them with that one question. Um, how are you going to take care of yourself until we speak again? All right. And it always kind of leaves them in, you know, moments of pause. It's like, uh, you always ask me this. I don't know. So that's a good question for you to just kind of think about because you're putting, you know, all this energy into everyone else and everything else. But then what about you? All right. So when it comes to self-care, I invite them to first define what is self-care for them, right? Because everybody has their own definition. But then ultimately is figuring out some of the things Mm -hmm. or activities that you do that you notice that there's a positive impact for you, right? Um, So it's like your own definition. But when it comes to, you know, life, right? Life keeps you busy and things happen and you're kind of looking at your schedule and you're like, okay, I have no time for me. So something I've been um, encouraging my clients is to look at their day, you know, and be realistic with the time that they do have. So starting to implement micro changes, right? So not necessarily saying, well, I don't have the whole day, so I can't practice self-care or Mm -hmm. I don't have the whole weekend, so I can't do this, right? I'm going to have to wait until next month. Right. But realistically, if you were to look at your day and how you start off your day, right, whether it's five minutes, what can you do within those five minutes that can create a positive impact for you? Right. So I encourage them to just kind of start small and then gradually you can increase the time, you can increase the days, whatever that may look like. But the key is to initiate it. Right. Because you can easily say, okay, well, I don't have the time. I don't have the time. I don't have the time. And something that I stress is that your body at some point is going to make you sit down and have that time, right? So it's either kind of, um, you know, get intentional about pouring into ourselves and taking those five minutes, even if it's breathing or writing, journaling, everybody has something that works for them, right? But the key is to initiate it and then just kind of, you know, figure out what works. So maybe you tried breathing, doesn't work. Okay, toss it to the side, try something else. So it's really about initiating and just kind of figuring out what works for you and making it realistic to the day that you do have, because I know life gets busy, certainly, right? We all have different roles. We all have these demands. And what can it look like for you to work with the time that you actually do have? Is it when you wake up on your drive to work, your lunch break? Are you actually taking your lunch break? Are you eating at the desk? So all of these things, right, um, that I talk to to, to my clients about in terms of being intentional with just kind of taking care of you, even if it's some, you know, a a small change that you can implement. So things of that sort that I would encourage clients to pour into themselves and practice self-care. That's good. Ooh, that's some good information. That's that's (laughs) really... That's really, 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 really good. I, I, I like how you mentioned that the question that you would ask, you would ask was like, you know, how are you going to take care of yourself until our next next session? That kind of puts the responsibility back on them. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that that's good. That that wow, that's good. That's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, I, as we wrap this up, mm-hmm. um, I, I definitely want to thank you again for coming on and and and. and having this conversation with me because I feel like it was extremely, extremely important. And I really hope those who are listening, those who are watching are able to take down some notes, you know, gain some really great information. Um, but for those who are like, hey, you know what? I I need this. I, I need 
to seek therapy, whether if they're Haitian or not Haitian, doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Um, how can how can somebody not only find you, but if they let's say they're not in the Florida area, because I think you're just licensed in the state of Florida. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, but if, if for, for those who may be a novice to this, and it's like, okay, I, I do need to seek therapy. I do need to speak to a, a, a counselor. How can mm-hmm. they reach you? And then if they can't reach you, what recommendations can you give for those who are for those who are looking to speak to a therapist and how can they find them? Right, definitely. So um, if, if you're looking specifically for me, um, uh, so you can reach out to me at 561-374-0517. And again, I um, provide services virtually to uh, women um, who are experiencing any stressors, um, changes, trying to navigate through motherhood, um, workplace stressors, relationship issues, anxiety, right? So really kind of helping you um, navigate through some of those changes and figure out what coping skills are going to be the most effective for you. So I do offer um, a free 15-minute phone call um, consultation um, just to kind of review, again, your needs and your recommendations. And ideally, if I'm going to be the best provider to support your needs. So again, 561-374-0517. I am also on Instagram. Um, It's bwbcounseling.com not that com. Uh, it's the handle BWE counseling. Uh, but that is my website, BWE counseling, um, that com. So you can also check that, um, out as well. And, uh, other resource that I tend to uh, refer clients to is www.psychologytoday.com. So that would be for, um, you know, clients that may want to just kind of explore other providers. So that's a great website that you can actually set up your parameters just kind of based on uh, gender, you know, race and, um, you know, what your concerns are, what type of a provider you're looking for. So it's a really great resource and um, uh, that can help, you know, if you're not in the state of Florida or if you're just like looking for different type of providers. If I'm not mistaken, they have um, psychologists on there, psychiatrists. Um, so that would be a great resource for you to utilize. Um, but yeah, and of course, if anything else, you're free to just kind of email me. Um, I don't know if there they can be something that I can input in here or maybe you can, you know, Jeff can make it available to you, but it's my first name. Merlindia, M-E-R-L-Y-N-D-I-A at bwcounseling.com. So you can email me and of course I can assist with any resources that you may need. Awesome. Yeah. And what I'll do is, is I'll on the description, I'll mm-hmm. make sure that I add the website, your IG, all the information. So just in case yeah. if they were able to write this down, don't have to, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> to rewind this back a little bit to kind of get this information. Yeah. Um, I'll make sure I put that in the description. So um, those who are looking to um, seek you and be able to gain some more potential clients or, or patients rather, um, that information will be available. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Thank you. No, you're welcome. I, I I thank you. I thank you again so so much. I, I really really do. You know, may you. may God continue to not only bless you but to bless your um your practice. Thank you. So I'm much. definitely praying for an increase of more and more clients that can be that you can help and save and they can just utilize it's just the amazing wisdom that you give as a licensed therapist. Um, you. you are doing the Lord's work because this is part of. This is part of ministry. People think ministry is just a pastor and a preacher and just mm-hmm. speaking the word of God, but this is also part of it too, because I, I do believe that um, mental health is, is a big thing and sometimes you need to seek other resources as well. So mm-hmm. I thank you so, so much. If there's anything else you want to add, anything else you want to leave, please, the floor is yours. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you having me on here, Jeff, and of course, you know, communicating how, um, you know, beneficial mental health um, therapy can be, mental health support can be. Um, Again, just kind of highlighting that you don't need to be in a crisis to seek some support. Um, Mental health can certainly be just another outlet for you to just kind of, um, you know, let let out some of your thoughts, let out some of your emotions and just kind of have that third party to provide some, some tools for you to just kind of navigate this life that we call life 
<laughs> basically, right? Um, so yeah, um, so I look forward to perhaps having more, um, you know, conversations regarding mental health and really uh, breaking things down and um, provide some education around that, that um, and, and how beneficial it can certainly be. Amazing. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you again. I truly, truly appreciate it. Congratulations on everything that you're doing and everything that you're gaining. Thank and, you. you know, to the Wild family, the Wild podcast family, thank you for taking the time to listen. I truly appreciate it. I know she truly appreciates it. And then until the next episode, I'll see you later. One love. All right. Bye-bye.